Hey everybody, this is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest, and today I'm going to be talking about native lupines. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's having a fantastic week. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about uh, what I feel is one of the most beautiful and uh, easy to grow perennials, uh, and that is native lupine, Lupinus perennis. Uh, there's a f number of things that make this a fantastic plant for the native plant garden or for your garden in general. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is just the, the incredible beauty of this plant. Now take a look at this plant. These are uh, some clumps here that I have grown on the corner of my house, probably about uh, three and a half feet tall. Just, but just a beautiful plant that uh, comes into bloom late May, uh, blooms for a couple of weeks. It'll have repeat blooms into June. It's got some shoots coming up down there. But this is just a beautiful plant. Not just the flowers, but uh, even the, the leaves are very beautiful leaves. Just, uh, so a lot of interest in the foliage and in the flowers. So this plant is uh, it's native to the northeastern part, northeastern part of the United States, up into Canada and Ontario. But it's really kind of suffered a lot of habitat loss over the years, and uh, you know increasingly it's a little bit harder to find out in the wild. Uh, there are some programs that are being designed to restore these wonderful plants, but uh, you know the reason that these have suffered a lot of loss is just because of development. These typically uh, like to grow in uh, oak savannas or pine barrens and a lot of those uh, those type of uh, habitats have been developed uh, the, you know they the timbers the, the cedar trees and stuff like that the pine trees have been cut down and used in the in lumber in the production of, of uh, building materials and things like that uh, so these kind of have suffered a, a lot of loss in, in that regard but they make a wonderful addition uh, to uh, your garden and uh, they're fair, they're pretty easy to grow and uh, one thing about these plants is, is uh, if you think about the, where they like to grow in the wild, uh, they typically like a little bit drier and uh, sandier soils. But they can adapt to average uh, garden soil. You don't really need to fertilize these. Uh, one of the great things, another uh, added benefit of this particular uh, plant right here is that they're in the, in the uh, pea family. And uh, those, those particular types of plants uh, oftentimes have the ability to capture nitrogen from the environment and uh, put it into the ground. So these are what are referred to as a nitrogen fixer. So they kind of create their own fertilizer and actually kind of even help the plants uh, around them grow a little bit better. So these are a, a wonderful pollinating plant. Uh, these get pollinated by bumblebees. There's some small mason bees uh, that are pollinating these. And uh, once these are pollinated, they'll develop these seed pods and uh, you can see some coming here and uh, they, they'll get a lot bigger and then you can collect these seeds in the fall. I'm going to walk around here to the back and show you another uh, another uh, uh, lupine bed that I have here and uh, all of these perennials that I have right here I grew from seed. So that should tell you something. These are pretty easy to grow from seed and I'm, I'm going to walk around here real quick show you this this another a uh, bunch of lupine that I have growing here. So this is another uh, clump that I have started from seed. Uh, typically you want to grow these in full sun uh, and you want to, like I said, you want a, a little bit drier soil. They can handle a little bit of moisture, but these are definitely not a, a plant you want to uh, plant in a, in a boggy area or anything like that. They will not do good. Uh, another thing about these is once you plant them, you're really going to want to leave them alone. They develop a really long tap root. Uh, so that's another one of the reasons why they can take a little bit drier soil. They have a very long taproot, so you, you don't want to transplant them. Uh, so you can collect those seed pods in the fall and spread them around, and uh, they will they will germinate. I spread a lot of these around from seed, the seeds that I'd collected, and, uh, you know, they come up. They're typically not going to bloom the first year. They're going to bloom second year. So what you want to do is just kind of, you know, sow some every year so that you can try and keep them blooming on a continual basis so these just really look beautiful look these look beautiful at the back of the border I got these kind of in the front this is just kind of where they seem to like it so I'm letting them go 
but they look great in cottage gardens, uh, any kind of garden style. These are going to really look beautiful. Uh, one of the main reasons that I that I planted these uh, native lupines is because they're the host plant for the Carner Blue butterfly, which is an endangered butterfly, small blue butterfly. Uh, you know, and because of the the fact that these have lost uh, a lot of habitat and they're not as widespread as they used to be. You know, the distribution of the Carner Blue, blood, Car Carner Blue uh, butterfly has been uh, dramatically reduced. So I don't know if there's any in this part of Ohio where I'm at, but I figure it doesn't hurt. And uh, if I remember correctly, there's a couple other different uh, species of butterflies that, that also will use this. So you know, I'm getting a, a double benefit. But, you know, the great thing about growing native plants, and I'm going to walk back over here, is that, you know, if... if, if Homeowners across the country and across the region would incorporate these into their gardens. You know, we could hopefully increase the distribution of the Carner Blue Butterfly and, and help to get it off the endangered species list. Uh, so that's really one of the main reasons I planted this. Whether or not it's going to help or not, I don't know. But, I, you know, if nothing else, this is just a beautiful plant. It looks great compared to other uh, pastel-colored plants. I have some creeping phlox underneath this. This is still blooming. It looks really great with that. Also looks great with uh, orange. A really, you know, dramatic contrast between purple and orange. Also looks good with yellows. Uh, so there's a really, uh, you can get really creative with this plant. It's a fantastic plant. Highly recommend planting this. You know, you can go online, some native nurseries, and buy a package of seeds. They're not that much. I would recommend scattering them out and planting them in the fall because they do need a little bit of cold stratification in order to, in order to germinate correctly. So that would be my one tip. If you get uh, seeds, uh, just plant them out in the fall and uh, see if they come up next year. And if they do, let them alone. They, they won't bloom that year. They'll bloom the following year. So again, this is native lupine. Uh, one other point I want to make. There's a lot of hybrids on the market. You see these at your local nurseries. And those ones, uh, as far as all the research goes, those ones are not utilized by the Carner Blue butter Butterfly as a host plant. So you want to make sure you stick with the straight species on these. That's really important. That's really key, uh, you know, for, you know, as far as being a host plant goes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That's a great time of year. Uh, I was on vacation, just got back a few days ago, so I thought I'd do a video. hope everybody's having a, uh, you know, a great time. It's almost the uh, official kickoff of the summer season. Appreciate all my new subscribers. Appreciate all the positive feedback. Uh, just uh, wonderful. I think we got a wonderful little community here. I appreciate all the feedback and all the positive uh, comments and all that so I hope everybody has a great day you know and I just encourage you to get out there and plant native you can make a difference have a great day bye